What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. Finally, my Super Mega Baseball 2 series is ready to debut. Welcome to the first episode. Many of you have been waiting for this and I've spent a lot of time creating the players, the teams, and this league. We begin here in the Kane League with eight teams that I have partially custom created and partially let the game generate. Today I wanted to introduce you to the eight teams in this league. We're gonna go through each team now, and then the first round of the Kane Invitational, our intro tournament to kick off the season. Let's begin with our team. We have the Toucans, who play at Shaka Sports Turf. I like the color scheme here and the uniforms, it's one of the more unique looks in the league. This is the team I plan to control for all or most of the series, and of course, I brought back many players from old series into this game. And among them on this team, we have Perry Cummings, the running back from my Browns franchise rebuild. We have Jordan Starks. We have Marcus Calhoun, Desmond Payne, and others. Here are the star players for the Toucans with Jordan Starks, who gives you a very reliable bat with both contact and power. He has some great fielding skills as well. Then it's Marcus Calhoun, the power hitting corner infielder. And the ace of our pitching staff is none other than Anton Greenberry, who's one of the most well-rounded players on the team. Other players on our team include the speedy, contact hitting Ja'Cory Day. He and Perry Cummings help make this the fastest team in this league. Cummings is actually the fastest player in this entire league. He offers a bit more power than Day and a little less contact. Up next we have the B-Wolves. This is the team I used in the first Super Mega Baseball, so they're very familiar. The ratings are not all the same. I balanced out the ratings to my liking in a way that made sense. There aren't any super teams in this league. There's a lot of parody. I did a lot of simulating. I simulated eight seasons last night and six teams won the championship. But the team with the most power in their lineup is the B-Wolves with Lance Adams. Andrew Ross and Leon Daniels, then of course one of the best pitchers in the league, Andy McKenzie. Next up we have our third team, the Warhawks. This team has a nice blend of contact hitters and power, and they also have some of the best velocity pitchers in the league. They have another unique look with their sleeveless uniforms. This is their roster with players from my Kalispell dynasty such as Lamar Williams, Rashawn Brooks, and Austin Bradley. And how about Remy John Charles, the father of Kelly John Charles, of Hayden John Charles. He's one of the top power bats for the Warhawks. But there's also Bram Atkinson. He's the hitter to watch out for in this Warhawk offense. Finally, here's their leadoff batter. It's Michael Bell, one of their most well-rounded players with a lot of ability. Up next, the team I had a lot of fun creating, we have the Phantoms, who play in the Motor Yard. They have this unique purple, black, gray, and white look, and their roster has the best contact out of any team. Their pitchers also have the most velocity. One of their top hitters is Kailoa Kanoa. He's a power bat who really doesn't have any weaknesses as a player. Then you have Jackson Taylor, the top contact hitter in the league, but he also brings some power to the table. Then you get one of the best closers in the league, Julio Mariano, who has some of the nastiest pitches in the game. Then we have the Dragons. This team is the worst power hitting team in the league, but they bring in a lot of contact, speed, and they play good defense. And you'll recognize Keiston Holiday on this team along with Cole Bulaga. But one of their top players is their ace pitcher, Deontay Watkins, the lefty. And one of their top hitters, power hitter, Tommy Ross. There's also the outfielder, Kiyoshi Tahara, who has one of the better blends of power and speed in the game. Speaking of power and speed, those are two things the Raptors have on their team. They are also the top rated fielding team. On their roster, they have familiar names such as Larry Wilbur and Nataki Mason. One of their top hitters is D.D. Sharp, another player who is very well-rounded. And then the twin brothers, Marcus Gates, an outfielder who hits for contact, and infielder Devin Gates, who is more of a power hitter. They bat back-to-back -back in the lineup. Next we have the Chompers. 
Their top trait is the junk rating for their pitchers, but they're pretty much a balanced roster. Cade Wilson is one of their best batters. He's a contact and speedy player. Then AJ Ray from my old Raiders franchise. He's the best player in their lineup. But then there's Jamal Henderson who brings great speed and contact as well. Finally, we round things out with the Razors. They hit for power, but they are the worst contact and the slowest team in this league. They also have the best junk rating for their pitchers, so their skills are all over the place. This roster has Ralph Hendricks and Sonny Archer from past series. But one of their best hitters is Asher Wright, one of the top power hitters in the league. But then there's Antoine Thomas, who also hits for power and has the strongest arm in the outfield. Marcus Bradley finishes things out as their top pitcher. And that will lead us into the series. We're going to begin with a 10 game regular season with the Toucans. But to further introduce you to this league, I thought it would be fun to have a little tournament. A little preseason action here. You're going to see all eight teams on display today. And we start with the Raptors and the Phantoms. And the first batter of the game is Kailoa Kanoa. High and hard to the deepest part of the park and he sends it out of here for a solo home run. Welcome to Super Mega Baseball 2 and the Kane League everybody. We're going through all four first round tournament games today. And tomorrow, I'll be streaming the semifinals and the championship game. Here's a hit by Jackson Taylor that's taken away by Devin Gates at third base. An outstanding defensive stop. And then you see their ace, that is Harold Smiley getting the strikeout against TC James. He'll get another one here with that 98 mile per hour fastball. Facing Marcus Gates later, he's a contact hitter and he puts this in the outfield with two down giving his brother a chance now with two away. Devin Gates hits for more power. He puts this in the air. Some serious hang time here, all the way to the warning track. And this stadium contains it. We'll jump ahead now, bottom three with two away. Grounder through the left side as the Raptors get a threat here, down one nothing. And Jet Collins the batter, hard to third base and caught by Vince Jennings. Many of you will recognize Tyrone Brightful here for the Phantoms, and he gets a drive behind this one. And that one's out of here, the second solo home run for the Phantoms. Now keep in mind, every team has their star players. I tried to keep this as even as I could while having every team their own identity. So I hope you enjoy this overall intro as we get familiar with the players. There's a double for Dion Gold, then Vince Jennings, he'll send this into the outfield and that'll bring home another run. This phantom offense, I knew they were going to be solid. They have the best contact hitters, but also Kailoa Kanoa, who's got serious power. He homered in his first trip and gets the RBI single this time to make it 4 nothing. So a nice lead for Harold Smiley, but the Raptors were not going to just give up there as they get a couple base hits in this inning. Then D.D. Sharp, deep to center, way out of here, wow, off the batter's eye. That's the furthest home run I've seen in Super Mega Baseball 2, traveling a whopping 473 feet. Just like that, we have a game again. But top six, here's Vince Jennings. They're trying to cut this off and no one can do it. Jennings rounds first, makes his way to third base. He's in with the two out triple. Then the Phantoms pinch hit Tyrone Brightful into the game. And Brightful pops this behind first base and it's caught by Jay Barry. So the Phantoms still up one, DD Sharp up again. Base hit through the left side. They get two aboard here in the seventh inning. Then surprisingly, they bust out the double steal and both runners advance. Collins next pitch, he goes up the middle, it's through and that scores two. The Raptors from four nothing make it a five four ball game. This Raptor offense is a serious problem as Skyler McGuire base hit through the middle. That'll bring home another run six four Raptors. Can the Phantoms make a late comeback? Jennings back to the pitcher. Morgan Adams the first, that's an out. Then Isaiah Hopkins on the ground to Devin Gates. And the Raptors wrap up this victory. Very impressive game as the Phantoms lose in the first round. 
But let me know what you think of everything down below in the comments section. I know not every team is filled with players from past series of mine, but I've been thinking about, you know, doing a draft between seasons and giving teams that need some help better players. And that way we can introduce more players from past series of mine. So this is not the end. I wanted to make this a bigger and better series than I did in Super Mega Baseball 1, and I wanted to be creative with it. I hope you enjoy it. Now we're with the Warhawks and the Dragons. Here's a drive from Lamar Williams, but it's caught by Freddie Hopkins out in right field. And here we go, all business, Bram Atkinson, no sleeves, no gloves, and that one goes off the left fielder's glove, he reaches with the hit. Up next, Remy John Charles reaches for one and grounds out to second base. Back to Austin Bradley on the mound against Max McDonald, the pitcher for the Dragons, who finally gets their first hit of the game. Bradley off to a really strong start. Then against Freddie Hopkins in the air to left, and that's caught by KC Wilcox. Top four against Tommy Ross. He looks at strike three for the second time, and he's supposed to be one of their best hitters. Here's a drive now. This is Kiyoshi Tahara way out to left center field. That gets out of here. Keep in mind with things like mojo and injuries in the game that sometimes players will exceed their ratings like you saw in the first Super Mega Baseball. Here's Cole Bulaga off the pitcher's glove and Bulaga ends up reaching. Here we go again. Bulaga gets the run a little bit, but then Axel Adams on the ground and the Warhawks get Bulaga out at second. Let's jump ahead now. The offense for the Warhawks trying to get going, and Michael Bell helps them out with the base hit. Then Atkinson through the left side. Back-to-back -back singles with nobody down. Remy John Charles makes it a third. Base is juiced for Skip Jordan. Breaking ball. Softly tapped. Catcher touches home and gets the double play. Phenomenal defense. Now two away. Quincy Hudson makes sure they'll get something from this inning. There's one, tying the game. KC Wilcox, runners at the corners, and a jam pop-up ends the fourth inning, tied. We'll go top five, Austin Bradley gives up another rocket up the middle as the Dragon offense really got going once their pitcher made a hit. Freddie Hopkins on the ground to third base, trying to go around the diamond, and he should have just tagged the base runner there. So it's an opportunity for Tommy Ross, who looks at strike three for the third time. Tied at one, we go bottom six. Michael Bell deep down the line, slicing. It stays fair somehow. And Michael Bell gets the stand up. Nope, he slid double. RBI opportunity, Bram Atkinson comes through again. A sharp ground ball all the way to the warning track, and that's your untying RBI. We go top 7-1 on the ground. Off the glove of Hudson, it gets into the outfield. You'll see a lot of different defensive miscues in this game. It's actually a lot of fun. But to follow a more routine play, and the Warhawks go 4-6-3 to turn 2. Trying to get an insurance run. Michael Bell with another drive. This one to the gap, and it's off the glove. It then goes to the wall as Bell ends up at second with another double. Remy John Charles now. There's a base hit with two aboard. Another run scores for the Warhawks. Skip Jordan next. And he'll send this to right center as well, and it gets all the way to the wall. Two runs come home for the Warhawks. And they make it 5-1, opening up a nice lead over the Dragons. The Warhawks go on to win this game and advance to round two where they will meet the Raptors. They win 5-1. And we saw just how good the top of their order can be with Atkinson, John Charles, and Michael Bell. They get 12 hits to the Dragons' 7. And the pitcher, Austin Bradley, did a pretty good job as well, only allowing 5 hits in 6 innings. Let's go on to game three. We have the B-Wolves in action now taking on the Razors. So a chance for me to again play with my old team before we start up the new season. There's Andy McKenzie with a filthy breaking ball on the outside. And on offense, we all know Leon Daniels, but he lines out to the pitcher. This game started out pretty slowly. In the air to right field, sliding catch by Corey Boyd. 
No score through two and a half as we go bottom three. And then Corey Boyd, who had the great defensive play, finally gets them a base runner. Then you get Flash Jackson at the top of the order. Gets underneath this one and flies out in the air to center. Top four, Andrew Carr at the dish. Hard hit through the infield. And this will get past Flash and go all the way to the wall. A one-out double for the Razors. Crew Kelly trying to bring him home, and he will with a base hit to right. Razors strike first. But we all know how good this B-Wolf offense can be. Bottom four, down the line, it stays fair, and that's Leon Daniels with the hit. Up next, Maurice Manning again down the line, it stays fair. Leon Daniels to third base, Manning wants second. The throw from Antoine Thomas is overthrown, and that allows Daniels to score. So Thomas, who has the strongest arm in the game, ends up costing his team a run. One apiece. How about the range of Flash Jackson in center field? McKenzie in the fifth. This one's in the air to right. Corey Boyd makes the diving catch. Phenomenal defense. That's part of why this was such a low scoring game. But here's a base hit that gets through and Jackson can't quite cut it off. So a two out double for the Razors. McKenzie trying to get out of this little jam and he strikes out Crew Kelly. Bottom six with Lance Adams. First pitch of this at bat is right down the middle. Driven to the deepest part of the park and it gets down. With the speed of Lance Adams, you know he doesn't want to stop at second. It's a triple for Lance. But there aren't too many one-two punches better than Lance and Andrew Ross who drives Lance Adams home. 2-1 B-Wolves. Are they done there? Here is Maurice Manning. Down the line, it stays fair. I'm not sure how, but Manning always seemed to come up with those big hits in the first series. He does it here again. 3-1 game. This one in the air to left. Trouble there for Lance? No, he has the speed. Let's head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Again, Lance Adams. That one's high. It's deep to center. This ball out of here. Two-run home run. B-Wolves lead 5-1 over the Razors. Meanwhile, we go to Evan Newton out of the bullpen. And here's a soft ground ball that Starks has trouble with. So it puts two aboard for the Razors. Antoine Thomas looks at strike three. With two away, Newton trying to get out of trouble. And this ball goes right back to him. And they get the third out. Top of the ninth inning, Andy Beckwith comes in to shut things down. And the B-Wolves go on to win, moving on to the semifinals tomorrow. The B-Wolves offense is one of the top in this league, but they also have one of the worst defenses, and their overall pitching staff isn't toward the top. So every team has some strengths and weaknesses. I think that we're going to have a really fun league to start out with that's going to be changing every year. I'll decide how I'll do this later, but I'd also like to do some player progression or regression if I can. So let's go into game four with our team will follow the Toucans as Anton Greenberry actually gets into some first inning trouble. Here's Tyler Phillips grounded to the right side and the Toucans turn two. No one scores for the Chompers. Bottom of the second inning, here is Desmond Payne from one of my older Roll to the Show series into the outfield and caught by A.J. Ray with that great speed. Top three, Anton Greenberry against Roland Underwood. He gets him swinging. Greenberry, a very well-rounded pitcher, the ace of this team, but still, the Chompers got some hits off him early. There's a hit from Morgan Scott. Then A.J. Ray over third base and into the outfield. That'll score a pair. A.J. Ray, the top player here for the Chompers, delivers. And we can't get the out at home. So now the Toucans playing from behind. Ja'Cory Day right back to the pitcher and caught. Anton Greenberry, our pitcher can get it done. There's a base hit into the outfield. Does that spark something? Perry Cummings next. Hard hit to third base and Underwood skies to make the catch. Top four for Greenberry. Here is a blooping fly ball shallow right that's caught by Kelly John Charles on the slide. How about Jordan Starks? 
He's made his way to Super Mega Baseball, and he sends this into the outfield, and they can't cut it off. Jordan ends up at second with the double. Michael Riley to follow, base hit through the middle. We had to get something going as Jordan is sent home, and he scores our first run of the game. Marcus Calhoun next, and he'll go to left center as Riley rounds second. It's another extra base hit with Riley headed home. Can the Toucans tie the game? Yes! Riley beats the throw and we advance. Dante Rooks from my Bears franchise. He doesn't start there yet, so I thought I'd start him here instead at catcher. There's another double with the Toucan offense really getting going in that inning. Unfortunately, Kelly John Charles strikes out in frustration. Here is Ja'Cory Day with a blooper. It gets down in center. And that makes it a four-run inning for the Toucans. Top six, Anton Greenberry still going strong, but this is driven deep to right. Morgan Scott makes it a one-run game. These lineups are so much fun with the various talents you have on each team. I really enjoy playing these games. AJ Ray later. Play made by Starks, but come on, Ray is way too fast. Chompers trying to extend the inning. A soft ground ball hit to Calhoun. Barehanded, and the throw is in time. Good defense. Greenberry trying to go as far as he can in this game. Top seven, two down. This play gets him through seven solid innings despite allowing three runs. Pat McChesney takes over in the eighth as this is sent out to the gap in left center. Extra base hit for the Chompers with two away. So a very key at bat against Tyler Phillips. Down the line, but just foul. Two strikes to Phillips. McChesney gets him looking for a big strikeout. On to the ninth inning. Same score as Marquise Walker enters to get the save. Starks at short, diving play, but again, the speed is too much. Hisashi Ichihara up the middle, and Walker makes the play. They turn two, and now just one out from advancing. It's up to Charles Hart, and he strikes out. The Toucans will advance to play the B-Wolves. And that's your first round of the Kane Invitational. I hope you enjoyed it. Some fun games here, and some really close ones too. I hope you're all looking forward to the rest of this series. I wanted to make this fun and different, and I put a lot of time and effort into getting this league underway. So the Kane League will start up soon. We'll finish out the tournament tomorrow with the live stream, and then we will have regular episodes playing as the Toucans as we continue on, and we'll see where this journey takes us. I'm open to doing things like trades and making moves for various teams. I want this to be a fun series. So leave your feedback down below. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this debut episode. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you later. Have a great day.